One of the things that's very striking about Putin is his height. At 1.7 meters, he's not a tall man. And psychologists have long known from a lot of research that height, particularly in men, can influence their psychology. A very recent study, only just published, seems to confirm the idea there actually is a thing called the Napoleon Complex. Napoleon was a short man who went around conquering Europe. And one of the theories is, do some short men have their personality influenced by their height? Are they attempting to compensate for being short by being more belligerent, more aggressive? Does Putin suffer from the Napoleon complex? Well, this study that came out recently found that shorter men were more prone to what's called the dark triad in psychological research. The dark triad are three very dark features of personality that are often found in dictators, in very aggressive world leaders. And these three features of personality are narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. So there is some research evidence that it is more likely um, than it would be the case if Putin was a different height, that he might be suffering from a constellation of personality features, which are the dark triad, that he's more likely to be psychopathic, Machiavellian, which means manipulative, and narcissistic, which means that he sees himself as, as wonderful and deserving of much more accolades than he's getting and attention that he's getting from the world. We understand from his childhood he was brought up in grinding poverty and his family may have lived in a flat with just one room and he may have been bullied by the children on the street and as a result, and perhaps because he was short as well, as a result, he trained in martial arts and apparently has a black belt in judo. So has he become someone who sees physical violence as a way of dealing with uh, being attacked and does he walk around feeling paranoid given his childhood and his history of being attacked by the thugs and the youths in the street and did that turn him into a kind of thug um, himself? The judo element and the martial arts element is very interesting indeed because at the heart of judo and many martial arts is the idea that you as a weaker, physically weaker opponent can overcome a physically stronger adversary. Is that part of the psychology of Putin? In judo, you use the weakness or the strength of your enemy and you turn that strength into a weakness. You use the enemy's lunge towards you to trip the enemy up. Is that psychology driving Putin in believing he can overcome what would appear at face value to be a stronger, much stronger set of adversaries on the world stage and leads him to enter into wars that most other leaders wouldn't enter into because they don't believe they could win them. A lot of Putin's behavior appears to arise out of a very paranoid worldview. Where does that paranoia come from? We understand that Putin goes to bed very late and he wakes up late. He wakes up apparently in the afternoon. And the very first thing that happens in his day is he gets a briefing. And the briefing, interestingly enough, doesn't come from his press officers. It doesn't come from people analyzing the world media. It doesn't come from economists telling him a little bit about the economy. Instead, and we do have to remember that Putin was a very senior member of the KGB and entered the KGB and was very keen to be part of the KGB as a young teenager. The story goes that as a young teenager, Putin walked in to KGB headquarters and asked how to get a job. And he was summarily told to go away and get uh, an education first. So this reveals something of the man's desire to be in the secret service. We know that when he wakes up in the afternoon, the first thing that happens is he gets a briefing from four different security agencies. The problem is if you have four different security agencies briefing you, they're all competing with each other. They're competing with each other to get your attention. And there is a sense in which this style of leadership may arise out of these first briefings he gets 
the first thing he receives, the first information he receives about the rest of the world are from these four security agencies who may have a vested interest in making the world seem very threatening because it means they then have a job to do. There are various rumours about exactly how much Putin is worth. No one really, it seems, knows the answer. But speculation is rife. He's clearly an immensely wealthy man. In fact, he may be the world's richest man. One estimate is that he's worth well over $200 billion. As a psychiatrist working in Harley Street, I often meet some very high net worth individuals. And for them, my experience is, money isn't playing the same role it plays in the rest of our lives. Most ordinary people, for money, it buys them comfort or luxury or protection um, from discomfort. For people who are worth that kind of money that Putin is, in my opinion, the money plays a different psychological role. The money becomes a scorekeeper, a scorekeeper as to who is the best. So it's perhaps possible that Putin is very competitive and is accumulating money, status and power because of a sense of competition with the other wealthy men in the world, but also other world leaders. One of the things that characterizes Putin's leadership is the fact that a lot of people around him, very close to him, have become immensely rich. And that's the style of his leadership. He rewards people who serve him well. And we know that Russia has the top 10% of the people who um, are at the top of the pile, in terms of um, the economic pile, that top 10% own 90% of Russia. It's the biggest form of inequality of any major nation uh, on the planet. The problem with the Russian attitude to wealth, the wealthy in Russia um, love their bling. They ride around in expensive cars, they go to expensive restaurants, so they flaunt their wealth. And for the rest of the population who are suffering hugely uh, in terms of the economic downturn that's affected Russia, there's going to be simmering resentment building up. And the only way for a dictator like Putin to keep order is to become increasingly repressive. There is a direct connection between the bling, the money, and repression. The theory that Putin suffers from a narcissistic personality disorder leads many psychologists to take the view that he's quite grandiose and he needs kind of constant reaffirmation of his grandiosity, of his um, superiority, of his specialness. And we see um, displays of behavior that most world leaders wouldn't do, which are very puzzling and but may be explained by the psychology of the situation. He's often seen bare-chested. Is this an attempt to uh, send out a message of virility and masculinity and strength? There's a famous incident where apparently it is said he saved um, some people from being mauled by a Siberian tiger by shooting the tiger in the nick of time with a tranquilizer dart from a rifle. There's a lot of speculation that this was a put-up job, the story, and the, the Siberian tiger was shipped in from a zoo specifically to be shot by Putin. The rumours on the internet are that the tiger died shortly afterwards because of being over-sedated. But why this theatrical act? It only makes sense if something's going on at a personality level, which is something that the rest of the world needs to take account of, though what's driving him is his narcissism his need to be the center of attention, and his need to be treated as a very special person. For many decades, the world has been worried about the possibility of nuclear war. And what has worried them is the possibility of an unstable leader having their finger on the button. And one of the deep questions about recent events is whether we are in that scenario now with Putin, who may be psychologically unstable, and he definitely does have his finger on the button. So it's a crucial question. Is Putin capable of launching a nuclear war? It would seem that we need to consider that what inhibits most leaders from that kind of prospect are their concerns and fears over the deaths of millions of people weighing on their conscience. There's a lot of evidence we should worry about whether Putin has that kind of inhibition mechanism within him.
There is or are many incidents we could look at which will be very troubling. This kind of cold-hearted, cold-blooded attitude of discarding the lives of other people to serve your own interests is a very worrying bit of evidence that it is possible that Putin has the psychological makeup of the kind of leader who would be prepared to push the button. It is very difficult to pick out any one particular world leader and refer to them as a psychopath. All world leaders have to have psychopathic traits. All leaders of major companies have to have psychopathic traits because they have to be able to execute and do things that hurt other people without blinking an eye. Churchill, Winston Churchill himself, made several military decisions that involved the sacrifice of the loss of life during World War II. So all world leaders have psychopathic characteristics. The question is, is Putin uniquely psychopathic? And we don't really know the answer to that yet, but we should be very concerned that we don't realize that in democracies, we're used to people being a lot more concerned about the lives of others. And in dictatorships, there is no thing, nothing holding a leader like that back. So a psychopath is in a particularly dangerous position when they're in a place where there is no democracy to restrain them.